Normally, we cover infection control in the second quarter in pathophysiology and personal protective equipment in um, the second quarter in acute care or PTA procedures one. So this year, we decided to move infection control basics up front um, because of what's going on with the um, COVID-19 pandemic. And um, I'm just going to do really three short little lectures on the basics, and then we're going to go into more detail next quarter in pathophysiology. Uh, Lisa, who is your uh, instructor for PTA 101, is going to do a little section on personal protective equipment. Working in healthcare, this is important. Um, we have to know all this stuff, and we have to protect ourselves so we are there to take care of our patients. So um, just a slight review of body defenses, which you probably encountered this information already in um, anatomy and physiology. We have um, several lines of defense um, in our body um, to protect us from um, threats, basically. So our first line of defense is a nonspecific line of defense. Um, it's a mechanical barrier to pathogens getting into our body. Unbroken skin and unbroken mucous membranes and secretions such as tears and gastric juices. So anything that tries to get in, if you um, having unbroken skin is a good barrier um, for a lot of pathogens, not all of them. Um, and tears and gastric juices are kind of trying to get everything as it comes in. Um, our second line of defense is also non-specific. Um, and we have uh, phagocytes, cells in our body that are um, eating things that, uh, that come in, just trying to get rid of debris in the body. Um, and inflammation is a nonspecific line of defense, um, largely for bacterial pathogens or foreign matter that gets into our body, getting past the first line of defense. The third line of defense is specific defense, which is our immune system. Um, the production of specific antibodies or cell-mediated immunity. Um, the problem with the current pandemic, with COVID-19, um, is it is a novel virus, meaning it's new. It's new in the human population, and our immune systems do not have a defense for this. So if it gets past our first line of defense, our second line of defense, we don't have a third line of defense for COVID-19. So this is why it's a big issue. There's, um, there's no specific treatment other than um, supportive treatment for symptoms. And depending on how serious your symptoms are, um, that could be a, a big deal. So because we don't have our third line of defense, um, that's why it's spreading so fast. So microorganisms um, are basically are small living forms that include bacteria, fungi, protozoa, and viruses. Our current foe is a virus. Um, bacteria, fungi, and protozoa are all um, living forms. A virus isn't. Um, it is an obligate pathogen. Bacteria and fungi and protozoa can do their own thing. If they get into your body, they can cause problems. But viruses need your body to replicate. So they're obligate parasites. That's all they do. Um, they can. A lot of bacteria and fungi and protozoa can grow in an artificial culture medium. Viruses need cells to glom onto. So um, there are. We have lots of non-pathogenic. Um, bacteria that are part of the normal floor of our body and they usually don't cause disease unless conditions change and they're often beneficial so our normal flora do things for us. Um, sometimes they're called opportunistic pathogens meaning they're okay when they're in their normal place but if they get in a in a um, place where they're not supposed to be they take the opportunity to become pathogens. Um, pathogens uh, are disease-causing microbes, basically. So viruses, they're bad boys. They're always um, disease-causing microbes. They are never part of our normal flora. They are, um, they are never uh, beneficial to us. So this is our little overview of um, types of microorganisms. Lots of different types of bacteria. 
um, and they're usually classified by shape. We'll talk more about bacteria in pathophysiology. Um, the um, fungi and um, other forms that are um, eukaryotes, um, they're another thing that we'll talk about in pathophysiology. And this time, in this particular lecture, we're going to talk about viruses. So a virus is basically some genetic material inside of a capsule that um, is going to attach to your cell and use your cells to reproduce itself. So it's not an actual free living form. It's a, um, it has to have you in order to live. So they're small obligate intracellular parasites. Um, they consist of a protein coat or capsid, and the protein coat comes in various shapes and sizes, um, which can change and mutate quickly. Um, it includes inside the protein coat is DNA or RNA, and the classification of a virus, whether it's a DNA virus or an RNA virus, is dependent on which nucleic acid it has. Some RNA-containing viruses contain an enzyme called reverse transcriptase, which converts RNA to DNA, so then it can uh, use your cellular mechanisms to reproduce itself. Um, viruses are also um, classified by shape, and so this picture, it's probably not of COVID-19 because the picture was made um, before COVID-19 existed, but it, this is a coronavirus. The shape of it, it's that that round capsule with the um, spikes coming out of it. That's what they look like. Scary, right? So um, these are some different shapes of viruses. And the one on the right there is the coronavirus, or is a coronavirus. So coronaviruses have been around a long time, but it's this novel or new one that we don't have immunity to that's causing all the problems in the world right now. So an active, in an active viral infection, the virus attaches to the host cell. The viral genetic material enters the cell. So, so the protein capsid is basically a, a genetic material injection mechanism that injects the virus's genetic material into your cell. It then takes over your um, cell's uh, mechanics to synthesize viral proteins and nucleic acids to reproduce itself, and the new viruses are assembled in the cytoplasm of the cell. So it's, it's basically a hostile takeover. Um, the virus comes in, it injects its DNA, it uses your cells to make more of itself, and then the virus is released by lysis of the host cell or budding from the host cell membrane. So a lot of the um, symptoms that we experience depend on which cells are affected um, by the virus. So the COVID-19 virus is specific for respiratory tissues at this point. It could easily mutate and do something else. So um, scary stuff. But um, it is right now it targets respiratory tissues, lung tissue, and upper respiratory tissues. The um, classification of whether your um, symptoms are serious or um, less seri milder symptoms, um, the mild symptoms tend to stay in the upper respiratory tract. So um, it's, you know, fever, sore throat, um, coughing, sneezing. And the more serious cases, it um, gets into the lower respiratory tract, into the lungs. So here's the little graphic of viral uh, replication. Um, the virus attaches to the host cell. Um, it uncoats its DNA or RNA, which enters the host cell, and it takes control of the host cell's DNA. And the, it takes over and makes the host cell synthesize viral components and assemble new viruses, and then the new viruses are released. And often that kills the host cell. So that's what does the damage to your lungs and your respiratory tissues.